It's a double-edged sword when you get a master's, bachelor's, PhD in a particular medium, because think about what you're actually doing. You're going through a curriculum that's been completely established for you by the institutions that have existed prior. When it comes to social things that have a great deal of subjective variance, uh, you lose objectivity in that sense because you're literally indoctrinated into the beliefs that are presented. To get a degree in economics, which is probably the most wasteful thing you could possibly do, is to be completely indoctrinated into the idea that what you're studying is actually a science and actually has some type of relevance to anything. So when I get emails from PhDs in economics that try to debunk the aspects that we talk about, it becomes quite clear to me that the reason they have such an objection is really an emotional one. It isn't an objective aspect. They have culminated an identity to themselves because of their belief system. And for me to take that away from them, to debunk their ideas about economics, is to take away their identity. It's easy to point out that some of the greatest minds that have contributed some of the most powerful inventions to our world have come from non-establishment institutions, have worked on their own, they've done their own study, they've guided their own direction of information. They didn't just sit in a classroom and take in the road information, do the step-by-step -step processes as oriented by the establishment, and then grab their diploma and degree, and hey, now I'm an expert in a given field. Uh, the most tremendous minds, the most tremendous contributions comes from those, from those that are outside of the box. I don't even need to give examples of that to make that known. So, back to my point, when it comes to social theory, if you will, credentialism, I give zero weight to. Academia is a detriment to advancing social progress. Another form of attack simply comes from the cultural nuance, comes from the social programming, uh, what we call the self-appointed guardians of the status quo. People that are suffering in the system just like anyone else, but their social identification is so powerful, they are so locked into the box, that they find it infuriating to think that what they're living is actually wrong, paradoxically. I get this all the time from people. The self-appointed guardians of the status quo are birthed in religion, birthed in economics, birthed in the illusion of democracy that we see today across the world, birthed in the, the various isms that are entirely pointless, capitalism, communism, fascism, socialism. You have the priesthood of the monetary system, the capitalists, if you will, you can give it that rhetoric. I don't use that word. It's meaningless. The monetarism is the word I use. The pretense for acquisition of money is based on differential advantage, which is based on dishonesty, period. Then you have the priesthood of religious concepts, religious identification, and the idea that somehow we know everything already, and there's a God, and he's looking down on us, controlling everything. I won't even go into the paradoxes that come from that extremely narrow notion. So in other words, the biggest crutch to the evolution of human thought is breaking your own indoctrination. It's very, very difficult to overcome emotional elements that have become so ingrained in you that you have an immediate reaction, an immediate suffering and pain when anything interferes with that. And it's a very, very complex problem. But I'll say it again. We have to learn how to break, excuse me, we have to learn how to identify and break our own indoctrination if we expect to move forward at all as a civilization.